if you look at the film industry, the South African film industry is actually the same age as Hollywood. Um, but obviously, looking at the factors that have to do with um, financial side of the thing, have to do with the business side of the thing, we find ourselves not necessarily being on the same path. Plus, if you compare us to the US, it's actually a wrong comparison because the US is almost half a continent that is a country. And we are sitting in our own little pockets and trying to do all these major things, but not really coming together, you know? Um, I'm so is that when I had to do a project in Kenya, I remember there was an issue with bringing equipment into Kenya. You know, you have to get some all type of work and permits and all these other things that existed there. And Mr. Duba tells me, he said, no man, you, you won't tell me that there aren't people who know how to do this thing where you go. So now, I'm gonna task you as a director. Go on your own, no DOP, no gaffer, no sound man, no actress, nothing. It was literally me and my bags and my Africanness going out to see if we can do this thing. And when we got to the ground, boom, equipment was on the ground. DOPs were on the ground, sound personnel were on the ground, and stories were on the ground. So what exactly do we actually miss? What do we not have that is actually making us disconnected as a people? And thus, we are, we are literally here you introduced me as a prophet, so I speak as a prophet. Speak! <laughs> we are going to be working together very soon. Hallelujah! I can do this! Hallelujah! Let me let Mr. Dube put a couple of words. Well, um, I'm Thomas Dube. Um, as he has indicated, I'm an executive producer, uh, which means that um, primarily I, I bring all the you know, the mula <laughs> to make things happen and um, and we've been working together for the last six to seven years um, and so we've, we've really traveled the journey together and one of the things that over the years we've always been committed to doing is to be able to reach out and to be able to expand what we do beyond the borders of South Africa and uh, you know, it's been very exciting to meet a lot of people that we've met. I knew that things and the potential was there, but through this trip, it was even further confirmed to me that there is a lot. However, as is the case with a lot of the African story, which does not only just apply to the film industry per se, it almost applies to almost every industry that you can think of. We have the resources, we have the stories, we have the minerals, we have, you know, the thing to make the thing. Yeah. And so knowing where I am, what I'm involved with, and because of my background, which is in finance, uh, working, uh, you know, previously worked for the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, um, you know, also in the financial industry, including the banks themselves, APSA. Um, you know, I've had access to a lot of people who are in the business sector. And so in our discussion, one of the things that we discussed was we are looking to invest, and one of the areas that they feel passionate about in investing is in the content production space. And the reason for this is because a lot of the narrative which impacts on a whole host of other things is told through the stories that are told that are coming out of Africa. And unfortunately, a lot of the stories that come out of our continent are stories about pity, are stories about people who are poor, are stories about people who need aid, and so forth. And when you have people like that, no one really want to do business with people who are not their equals, right? And so that is precisely what is happening. And yet there is so much wealth 
so much that we can offer, not just from a money terms, but in terms of the stories, in terms of everything. Hence, some of our friends can't leave us alone, you know, and they keep on coming back because we have a lot that they just don't have, mm -hmm. and that is just how it is. And so, what we really want to do in this trip is we didn't come with any preconceived notions and ideas. We didn't come saying, look, we are experts and, you know, we're going to meet people that we're kidding. Because at the end of the day, we could be repeating the very same thing that we are trying to fight against. Mm. And so the reason why we are here is because we want to have conversations. And that um, we want to be able to find out. We want to be able to hear. And so today we would really, time permitting, would like to hear more from yourselves so that we can come away with an understanding of what the industry looks like. Um, and I call it industry even though in our discussion with someone earlier today, they made a point that we don't have an industry. Yeah. And yet, with the medium that we are involved in, we stand a much better chance of being able to influence I always say, even though, okay, maybe I shouldn't say this, but I always say that uh, my children, uh, they are very much, they, they just like to go onto YouTube, and they just love watching this um, Nigerian, you know, those, uh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, angel comedy and whatever, <laughs> and they, they talk like that as well. And now you may take that for granted, but that is how the, the connection happens, because they see themselves in them and they you know they, they, they enjoy and they, they feel it and we have we are in a unique position more than the politicians to actually make a difference and turn that thing around depending on how we come together and take this thing forward so thank you so much for taking your time to listen to us we are grateful to be here and, um, and unless there's questions or whatever I'm just not gonna say much and hear more from, from yourselves. And of course, if there's questions, then we'll do our best to answer them. Thank you very much. But what do you really consider while weighing up how a best film production or a best film project, final product, how it has to be? What do you consider? Is it acting, story, direction, shooting, cinematography? I don't know. It becomes a very a very tough question to answer, but I will attempt. And the reason why I've started off in this way is because I normally get asked as a director what, what makes up my job or what do I think is the key ingredient to making a good feature film or a good product. And the reality of things is that if you do not have the right key people in all the various departments when you are in production, then you are going to fail. A director is only as good as his assistant director. A director is only as good as the actors who receive direction from him. A director is only as good as the guys in the art department who are standby on set. A director is only as good as the continuity person who makes sure that everything is in continuity. The director is also only as good as the ability of the editor who is able to then piece all the raw material that has been shot together. And the director is only as good as the music that then comes in at the end of the production to kind of give a backbone to what the story is. So what I guess my answer is to that question in terms of uh, what do I think is the most uh, important thing in creating a beautiful piece? I think it is the synergy. One, you need to have story. What is the story? If there is no story, there is nothing. All we're looking is at beautiful shots. So my question is, um, <coughs> I'm sure you researched before you came to Uganda. Um, I don't think it just landed. I know you, you are you were in, uh, in contact with Jabba before. What then do you know about Chicago before we tell you about us? Uh, Mr. President, um, and I don't want to sound like the, the, the what, what do we call this, the tourist in all this and say, 
I know Ikemi and I know your current president. And, and, and those other ones that inspired the whole thing because they've been ruling, right? Um, we personally, I, we played by feelings and we played by energy. And, and thus, like Mr. Dube had said, had alluded earlier on, that we did not come with preconceived notions of what we might get. The danger of doing that is I've already, if, if I had done in-depth research, I would already have put you in a box to say, ah, these ones, I need to go and fix this and this and this. But we decided that, you know, when we're going to come in as little kids knowing absolutely nothing except what you are going to tell us about the place. So that at the end of the day, the best people who understand the nuances and the true pearls that exist on the ground are actually the people on the ground. I cannot depend on external media to dictate to me and tell me what is actually the situation on the ground. Because that having been done and with the media that we have been uh, fed throughout Africa and especially in South Africa, it, 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 it's mostly on a negative connotation. Like I said, I know of Museveni because he's been ruling this place for a very long time. Uh, that's what we learn on political news. You know what I'm saying? Like you spoke about Ugandan films are some of the best films. I have not necessarily been exposed to Ugandan films, but I think if you say they are dope, they are dope. So all, all I have to do is actually then sit down and, and watch the content and then we can actually um, go forward in terms of what we can share, uh, cross-pollination of skills, um, whether post-production, production and whatever that we can, we can really talk about from stemming from this conversation going forward. But it seems there's a shift going on. And um, we are stuck. A few people in other industries that have uh, made it African, like we may say, they have been able to make it on an international level. But for our industry, it requires a rebrand. And you cannot rebrand unless you really have a vision of what you want to become, where you want to go, and how you want the world to perceive you and take you in a special way. So my question is, you're moving around and uh, you have this burden. We've been having this discussion here over and over again. How can we rebrand and don't lose the identity along the way? It's very important for us to have our own national pride. Nothing wrong with that. Because that is where you start. But sometimes that is what actually also holds us back. Because, you know, we come and say, look, I'm the best. You come, I'm the best. Okay, so what? You know? But the reality is that if we want to be able to move forward and to be able to take advantage of the potential that the continent offers, we need to be able to walk this thing together. Let me just give an example. Not everyone has everything. Um, Uganda has got its own uh, thing to offer. Ethiopia has got its own thing to offer. And as you bring all of this into, if you, if you like, the menu, uh, we are able to feast, right? And we are able to offer something. But as long as we say, okay, well, you know what? I'm going in my corner. I will do my thing. It is not going to happen. And so the challenge that we face, therefore, is how do we do that? How do we work together in a way that recognizes the different strengths that comes from each and every one of us. And hence we said when we started this conversation that our interaction is not based on we are coming here, we are the best, or whatever the case may be. Quite frankly, we have not had any of us use that word. In fact, it came from some of you, not from us. 
Uh, and, so, and so that's what we are coming with. And we are saying, let's talk. Asikulu. <laughs> right? Let's move forward. Let's do something. And we are very committed on this thing, by the way. And we are going to move with those that want to move with us. It is as simple as that. So why of the few countries that you chose to go to, did you choose Uganda, one of the countries that you even haven't watched its film, but you chose to come and watch such a film? I'll give a very simple answer. The decision was region based. Um, Uganda just happens to be in East Africa, and we were exploring East Africa. Um, and Central Africa is Central Africa, Sadek region is Sadek region, uh, and West Africa is West Africa. And most importantly for us now, we were interested in East Africa, as we've done work in West Africa before. Currently we are in the Sadek region, so we understand that region, but it is understanding the East African region, and that was, that's what has really inspired um, us coming to the East African region and specifically to, to Uganda. What I think, Africans, we must take ourselves back before the missionaries. And we are like, how did our grandparents used to please each other? And we, yeah, we must take ourselves back. So, uh, okay, I would like, we suppose the white people never came to this continent. And we are like, it's only black. I need to please Kenya, Tanzania, it's only black continent. I think that's what we need to put the whites out of the image. And it's like, they, are not, they don't exist. That's what I think. We must take ourselves back. I believe there's so much more we can offer to the world, whether you like it or not. Culture is something which is adventurous and coming up with movies, okay, which portray the African culture, they say well, whether you like it or not, they will love our movies. Um, I'll start with the cross-pollination thing. You are only as good as what you are exposed to. We are exposed to some of the best facilities in, in the world. And that has, having been said, if we stay with that, we are no good to anyone else who is here trying to make it in the space. That's the first thing that I want to say. The second thing I want to say, talking from how do we then try and do a proper distribution thing? We have seen a lot of different distribution models. And fortunate or unfortunate enough, the models are region and area dependent and specific. We were speaking to Ian this, this afternoon. Um, Ian is, is, is one, one, one of your uh, greatest people who lives in Canada and does a lot of work with whoever, and whoever. he does a lot of work. So he's been exposed to a form of marketing um, and publishing strategy which works for the local um, 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 aspect of a film. First, we need to accept who we are as blacks. Recognize our entity, our culture. We need to unite. That is number one. If you're based in South Africa, I'm an actor or producer in Uganda, uh, we need to have to lay uh, the ground, we do the marketing. If there is something from Uganda, we realize there is a new movie here. Please do something. When you do the same, also send something in Uganda. We do the marketing. It is very, very important. Before we think of uh, competing with the white man, because as you understand, you already understand, I say it so that the white man actually, even the black Americans who are there, they are fighting. They are not, I mean, they are not recognized. So I think we need to network as blacks. That's the best way I think. Yeah. 
my president said something very powerful about co-production. Yeah. And you have been privileged to move around Africa. So my humble request is, as you move around, he said, he said, he said we should do production where you, you participate, somebody from South Africa, you know. But again, I'm thinking how to talk with the stakeholders, wherever you guys are going, that in certain projects, we could have locations, we could have locations just for one project. A piece of it shot from South Africa, mm -hmm. a piece of it from Nigeria, mm -hmm. a piece of it from Uganda. According to the story, I would want to tell it. Yes. And that would, be, that would be very, very powerful to spread the love and the market and the unity so that we could so, 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 so get content for Africans. Yes. Yeah. So we're not talking theory. My answer I said at the beginning, we're not talking interaction only, we're talking action. And some of that action has already been effected. It's already happening. Roy, and, and, and those are not people that we just met. Those are people we work with on a production. And the same thing can be said about Kenya, you know, Kurio Kabochi. You know, we work with him there. Uh, you know, and, 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 uh, and, and so forth. I mean, I can go on and on. But what we are really talking about here is how do we now take this to an even higher level? Okay? Where now we begin to say, not only are we getting people in those countries when we come and do a production, but how do we bring even what we produce so that we begin to share it within this market that is Africa. Because when we talk about industry, we're not just talking, as I said earlier on, about individual profits and money that goes to one's pocket. But we're talking about the multiplier effect of whatever it is that we are doing. So we need to be professional in what we do. That's another thing. Like Jimmy had said, the only reason why we have come back to your question is because Jimmy and Roy and um, Andrew. Andrew and the other guys were actually good at what they did. And I was like, okay, cool, there, are, there is hope. There are professionals on the ground. And that's why we are going back. <laughs>